Hi, welcome back. Okay, uh, this is really going to be uh, very short uh, today. So this, uh, for this uh, lecture, all I want to do is to derive an equation, an important equation that is derived in your uh, book in chapter, uh, section 27.1, but I'll go over it with you because it's a bit uh, subtle at first. What I want to do is uh, to look at more in more details at the actual motion of charges inside the conductor. Let's say a wire in which there's a current flowing. Um, if you um, if you look at the actual motion, let's say you have a force, an electric force pushing the free electrons to the right. Remember that um, you have atoms also and bound electrons, but those those don't participate to the current. So we just focus here on the free electrons. So they are pushed to the right. You might expect that they would just move to the right and accelerate. What really happens is more uh, complicated. What we have is that actually, instead of, uh, of moving um, uh, along a straight line, you push an electron, it's pushed to the right, and then it will very short, shortly it will collide with, with uh, an atom. So it will collide, and then it's pushed like this. It collides with another atom here, collides again, collides, 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 and so on. There are many, many, many collisions. Uh, to be exact here, it was too long to, uh, to draw, but the actual motion between the two collisions is not a straight line. You really have like a parabola uh, because uh, there's a net force to the right. But anyway, roughly, you no. Know, if we make an approximation, it's about a straight line between collisions. So we have those collisions that keep happening. And even if, even if there's an electric force to the right, sometimes there's collisions uh, for which the electrons will rebound a bit to the left before colliding again and pushing to the right and so on. So you have this chaotic, very complicated motion back and forth like this. But what happens is that the motion between collisions is very, very quick. Um, but uh, the overall motion, so overall, overall the electrons are moving to the right but they're not moving to the right very quickly because they keep bouncing back and forth. So if you look at the actual speed between collisions, you can do a calculation, it's actually several kilometers per second. At, uh, and I'm talking about ordinary room temperatures. Uh, you have huge speed. Talk, think about that, a few kilometers every second, and that's how fast those free electrons are moving. So they're moving very, very quickly between collisions. But because of these large number of collisions, the net motion is to the right, but it is very slow because it keeps bouncing back and forth. So the average speed is very small. How small is that? You're going to do a calculation soon and you see, uh, you, you, you get some, some idea. It's, it's, going to, it's, actually, it's very, very um, uh, small compared to those numbers. So the average speed will turn out to be very, very small, you see. Okay. This average speed, because it, this overall motion is like we say that the electrons are slowly drifting to the right, even though they're moving very qu quickly between collisions, they're slowly drifting to the right. So we call the average speed the drift speed V sub D. Okay, it's a speed here, so it's, it's not a vector. It's just um, a speed, a, a scalar. Okay. Now, if you ignore these, if you don't focus on this number, large number of collisions, you just look at the overall motion, the average motion, then you can think of the electrons as, as moving at constant speed, uh, let's say to the right, okay, at the speed Vd. Now, if you look at, if you think about current, current measures the flow of charges in a certain cross-section. So how much, how much charge in coulombs cross a certain, uh, goes through a certain cross-section every second. There, there has to be a connection between the current and the drift speed, because the drift speed measures how fast, uh, on, on average, the electrons are moving, and the current measures how much charge goes through a cross-section per second. So they must be connected. A larger current will give you a larger drift speed and vice versa. So that's our goal today, is to get this relationship between the current and the drift speed. The current you can measure easily in the lab. The drift speed you cannot measure directly. You cannot see the electrons. So uh, we'll see that actually, um, if you know the current and some other factors you'll see in a minute, uh, for a certain material, you can calculate how fast the free electrons are drifting in the, in the, in the wire for a given current. Uh, and the current and the drift speed are actually also related to the free electron density. I just want to remind you what this is. Uh, the free electron density, n, lowercase n, 
is the number of free electrons per meter cube. And clearly, if you have, let's say, just uh, you know, a handful of free electrons moving at a certain speed, you'll have a small current. If you have a huge number of free electrons all moving at the same speed to the right, uh, you're going to have a larger current. So there must be a connection between the drift speed, the current, I, and the free electron density. And that's what we're going to, uh, to work out in, the, in a minute. Now, from now on, I'm going to stop talking about uh, free electrons. I'll talk about those fictitious positive charges, which remember, for each free electron in, this, in the wire, you just imagine that you replace it by a positive charge that has the same charge as the electron, but that, that is positive. So each free electron you replace by a positive charge with a charge of plus E, 1.6 times, times 10 minus 19 Coulomb. And clearly, because since we replace, we replace each free electron by one of those fictitious positive charges, the density of free electron is the same as the density of those fictitious charges. There's one for one. So we use N for the density of those uh, fictitious positive charges. Okay, so here's the situation. We have a wire. Uh, here I just draw the, uh, you know, those uh, positive charges that are uh, fictitious positive charges that replace each free electron. Uh, I don't draw the atoms. So the nuclei are not shown, and the bound electrons that are stuck to the nuclei are not shown because those don't participate in the current. So we focus on those uh, charges that are moving. So, um, and again, uh, think of those as being positive charges. So for each of them here moving to the right, physically at the atomic level, there's an electron moving to the left. So what I do now, so they all move, I, I just drew the vector for, for one of them, but they all move to the right at a drift speed VD. Okay, all of them are, flow, are drifting to the right. Now I cut the wire. I create a cross-section here, and I call capital A the area, the surface area of this cross-section. So A is called the cross-sectional area in meter square. Um, if the wire is a cylinder, like here, then um, this is a, a view from the side. So if you have wire as a cylinder, then the area is just pi r square, the area of a circle. Okay, now, next thing I look at, is uh, what so we're going to calculate the current. So my goal is to go back to the definition, definition of the average current, and I'm going to calculate delta Q over delta T. And the goal is that um, we want to calculate this and to, f to get a result here, an expression that contains VD, the drift speed. So what do we do? I redraw that here. Um, okay. So first, first step, you pick a time interval delta t, okay? You could take it to be one microsecond or five seconds. You just fix delta t, okay? We fix the delta t. Then we say during that delta t, in this, this wire here, which charges in, in the time delta t, let's say delta t is five seconds, during five seconds, which charges will go through the cross-section? So all the charges are moving to the right, Okay, here those, uh, no, they have, they've passed the cross-section. So one that is close here will, in five seconds, will have time to go through. This one will have time to go through, probably, this one, and so on. If you go too far, at some point, so this one might have, in five seconds, might have time to just barely make it. If you go too far, this one here in five seconds won't have time to reach the surface, so it won't cr uh, go through. So in a, for a given delta t, there's just a certain number of those free charges that, that will make it and go through the cross-section. Those that are here are too far, and they won't have time to get there, okay? So the question is, okay, uh, where is this, uh, this cross-section here? How far do you go? So past this, these are the ones that didn't have time to make it. Those had time to make it. Now, in the time delta t, what distance do each of those charges travel? Well, they move at the speed VD, which is constant. So they all move a distance of VD times delta T. That's the distance they travel in delta T. So that means, uh, um, well, okay, so, so the, that's the distance they travel in the time delta T. So the charges here, that are farther than V delta T won't have time to make it because they're too far. The ones that are closer than V, v D times delta T will make it. 
So what I'm saying is that all the, the charges that are within the distance Vd times zeta t, all those that are here in this cylinder will have time to make it to the surface in the time zeta t. All those that are farther here will not have time in the time zeta t to reach your surface. So the only charges that will cross the surface, your surface A, in the time zeta t are those that are contained within the cylinder. Now notice this cylinder is what? Okay, it's a cylinder with a length of equal to Vd times delta t and a cross-sectional area equal to A, okay? So, so uh, we'll need the volume in a minute. What's the volume of the cylinder? It's just this distance multiplied by A. That's the volume of the cylinder. Okay, well said. So as I said, all the charges, okay, there should be an S here, within the cylinder of length Vd times delta t and cross a sectional area A will have time to make it through or surface in the time delta t. Okay? Now, how many free electrons are, are, are in that cylinder? So if I go back here, we know all these here will make it. How many do we have here? How many free electrons? Well, then uh, remember, the number of free electrons in a, any, any volume is just little n times the volume. And that's also the number of free uh, of those free fictitious positive charges. So you take n times the volume, but we want uh, the number of uh, of uh, charges inside our cylinder. So what you do for our our cylinder has a volume equal to a times v d times delta t. So all that here, this product here, gives you the number of free electrons, also the number of free uh, fictitious charges that are contained in the cylinder that make it through our cross-section in the time delta t. Now, if you have that many uh, charges going through the surface, how much charge in Coulomb go through the surface? Well, the, the, the charge in Coulomb is just the number we just found, which is that. That's the number of, of free charges. And we multiply by the charge of each of them. Now we're talking here in terms of those fictitious positive charges. So we multiply by the by E plus E. That's the total amount of charge that went through the surface in the time delta t. And that's it. Now I average is delta q over delta t. You take this divided by delta t, and you get that the I average is the density, the, the uh, free electron density times the elementary charge times the area of your, 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 your wire times the drift speed. That's the key equation, okay? So we can use that to calculate the cell drift speed. So I'll leave it that to you, uh, just a comment. In the book, sometimes they use uh, Q instead of E in the equation for the current. So when you see their Q, they mean E, the elementary charge. Now, read section 27.1 in the ebook uh, online and do example 27.1 on page 811. Uh, uh, as a practice. That's practice. That's not an assignment. Just do that for, for practice. Thank you.